Why should we care about the fall of the Berlin Wall? Well, first of all, because it meant that the Iron Curtain was coming down as well. And in that great year of 1989, which was called the Year of Miracles, all over Eastern and Central Europe, whether it was Poland or Czechoslovakia or Hungary, and then finally, of course, in East Germany, people were free for the first time in 40 years. Well, back in January of 1990, uh, my wife and I were having a brunch one Sunday, and this was two months after the wall had come down. And I said, well, already people are beginning to forget about communism. Already they're beginning to forget about why it fell, why it collapsed. And they're beginning to forget about the victims of communism, who we knew were in the tens of millions. And Anne said to me, you know what we need? We need a memorial to the victims of communism. And I scribbled that down on a piece of paper, stuck it in my pocket, and the next morning, which was Monday, began making calls. And we were off from there with the idea of having a memorial to all the victims of communism, which now number we know according to the Black Book of Communism, about 100 million. I mean, there was no freedom. There was no freedom of speech, no freedom of religion, no freedom of thought. People couldn't write a poem or a play or, or a story or conduct a scientific experiment without some censor first approving it. All of that story has to be told. The difficulty for the media is, you know, where are the pictures? And that, of course, is one of the reasons why we're very excited about the Gulag collection because it is a visual story of the Gulag, painted by Nikolai Getman, who was a political prisoner from 1945 to 1953. Uh, there he was in far distant Siberia. Uh, degrees were 30 and 40 degrees below zero, and they worked outside in those. Their, their diet consisted of a couple of pieces of bread the size of your fist and some thin gruel. Uh, they slept on wooden bunks with mattresses which were filled with straw, and yet he did survive. He was a professional artist, and he came out and said, you know, I want to remember those people who were with me in the Gulag. Their sacrifice should not be in vain or forgotten. So I'm going to start doing what I do best, which is to do a series of paintings. And so for the next 40 years, he painted uh, these haunting uh, works of, in secret, from memory, uh, capturing and recapturing uh, those, those, those uh, terrible days of, of pain and suffering and death. Uh, it, it's an extraordinary thing that he was able to survive and yet to capture, I think, so brilliantly and hauntingly these paintings. Uh, they're on exhibit here uh, through December. Uh, they will then, we're thinking about a traveling exhibition. And then uh, we will look for a permanent home for this collection, hopefully in a bricks and mortar museum here in Washington, D.C., uh, for the victims of communism and their memory and their sacrifice. The Cold War was something that we fought for 45 years. And I think that as we look back, upon that event, that great event. We have to resolve that never again will peoples and nations allow so evil a tyranny to terrorize the world.